So I have just finished assembling my uh, new um, mid-drive uh, electric bike and I'm going to give you a quick tour of the electric bike. Um, I started with a new mountain bike. This is a Gravity 27.5 mountain bike. Um, the reason I changed bikes is my old bike had um, rear suspension and the problem with rear suspension is the rear suspension uses this area here for the shock and when you have that then there's no space for your battery to be mounted in this triangle area and so I, I wanted I wanted this space back in the in the center of the frame where I could mount my battery and so I actually ordered a new mountain bike a, a hardtail and um, this is the bike very happy with the bike and then I've converted it to a mid-drive system um, first thing during the conversion that you have to do is um, you can see the mid-drive motor down there um, and in order to install that the, the, the mid-drive in the cassette um, the first thing you do is you actually have to pull off the pedals on both sides and uh, that was the major issue I ran into I bought a um, I bought a cheap like five dollar pedal puller tool off um, off eBay and you screw it into the pedal and then um, you use a wrench to wind off the pedal because it's a ta it's a taper fit on the cassette there and uh, you use the puller you use the special uh, bike puller tool to uh, remove the pedal well I screwed the pedal puller tool in and started to wind it off and it actually ripped the threads out of the pedals absolutely destroying the pedal and if leaving the pedal in place making it near impossible for me to actually remove the pedal and, and do the conversion it was a disaster this is actually the pedal <laughs> you know and um, unfortunately you know it was all brand new Shimano gear and I actually had to go and destroy it but you can see here the the threads got pulled right out of the pedal by the tool and I think the tool was just cheap and didn't have very good threads itself and the threads I think the pulls the, the the bad threads on the tool slipped and destroyed the threads on the on the pedal well once these threads were gone I had no way of removing the the pedal so what I actually had to do was get one of my three jaw automotive puller tools that I use on all my cars and I actually had to put that on with an impact gun. The problem is the puller has teeth that need to come and grab and the ring gear was in the way here and so I literally took an angle grinder and cut out the cut off the third ring gear to create space for the puller tool to grab around the pedal and then the automotive puller tool was able to remove the pedal but in the process you know you've absolutely destroyed all the Shimano gear um, luckily I mean it all gets replaced with electric gear but I would have liked to have keep, kept this so I could convert the bike back to stock if I ever wanted to but that's not happening because the uh, the uh, you know the pedals are destroyed but anyways the conversion is done if you do this you will need a um, multiple bike tools the mid drive comes with some tools but it only comes with the tools to reassemble the motor it does not come with the tools to take off the pedals take out the existing cartridge and there is a very special socket that removes the existing Shimano uh, cassette from from the, the, the hub there and um, so they make these they make these like automotive tool kits that have like three or four different tools in them and you kind of will need one of those kits even if it's a cheap one you kind of need you will need that that special socket to because even once the pedals are removed you need a special socket to remove the um, the cassette um, anyways um, um, I removed the anyways once the cassette was out it was just a matter of sliding the hub drive back in and once you're reassembling all the tools are provided um, there's a there's a nut that holds the hub drive on and they give you a special spanner to tighten the nut on then you uh, put the put the two pedals back on um, remember that some of these items are actually have um, some of these items have left and right threads on them um, 
So not everything is righty tidy lefty loosey. Um, you need to be careful. Some things have reverse threads d designed so that it won't come out when you pedal. Um, but you know, so not everything's righty tidy. But um, you'll you'll figure it out. Um, anyways, and then you 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 just literally slide the motor in, put the new nut on, reattach the pedal, or you know, put the the you know the cargo is already you know you put the cog on, put the pedals on. And basically, you're done with the mid-drive conversion. This is a very easy conversion if the pedal doesn't get, you know, if you don't rip the threads out of the pedal and the pedal comes off first try. This is a very easy conversion. You don't have to mess with all the, um, with all the gearing and everything like that. On my previous bike, I did a rear conversion, but then I had to deal with the, you know, I had to deal with the um, derailers and the gears and all of that kind of stuff. Everything just went right there and, and it went together nicely. Um, I, did remo I did remove the middle derailleur there. Um, the actual gear shift and the middle derailleur is completely gone because this is now a single front cog. Um, anyways, let me take you in a little closer and show you a few things. So you can see now, it is just a single cog, the derailleur is gone, that's the motor, and then these are just the, the included pedals that came with the, with the gear set. Um, let me take you around the other side. That over there is actually a speed sensor. There is a magnet um, bolted onto one of the spokes. And every time it passes that that speed sensor, the speed sensor counts the rotations and knows what speed you're doing. You program in the controller what size wheels you have, and this is a 27.5. And so you tell it it's 27.5, and then it can count the number of rotations, and then it knows pretty accurately what speed you are doing. Um, let me show you the the handlebar layout here. This is pretty tricky. Um, this part is pretty tricky, figuring out places to put everything. I am right-handed, and I would like to have put the throttle on the right hand. The problem is, I already have all my gear shifting here. So, um, you know, I, I did actually originally mount the throttle here, and I actually got a different kind of throttle that has kind of a, a sideways throttle lever that you can kind of push sideways like that. But it really didn't clear the the gear shift very well, and and so I was kind of struggling. I could maybe go to a grip shift, um, but actually, I don't think I. Um, the, if you look at some of the grip shifts, they actually have pretty large, sort of. Uh, the end of the grip shifts are pretty large, where some of the electronics. Are, are housed and I think that if I had a large grip shift here it would interfere with the with the gear shifting so um, I decided not to put the throttle on this side and to put everything you know a lot of stuff on this side the reason for that is this side because I've already I don't have to have a gear shift on this side um, because I removed the gear shift from this side I have more space so this side now has my throttle and has the controller this is the 500C controller. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, uh, you know, it's pretty nice, and I'll show you around it um, right now. But you can see I have my, my throttle here, my left-handed throttle, my pedals, um, and then the, the controller. Um, before I show you around the controller, let me just tell you that, let me show you on the, on the, um, the pedals have a sensor on them. Uh, you can't really see. Let me let me figure out how I can show you this. There. There. That is a sensor and that is a magnet. This is a Hall effect sensor and this is a magnet. And this allows the control the, the, the hub motor to know when you're applying brakes. When that magnet moves away from the Hall effect sensor then it knows that you've applied the brakes and that will automatically 
um, turn off the motor if you're in pedal assist mode or if you're you know using the throttle that will immediately kill the motor so that the motor isn't fighting the brake so if you have an emergency braking situation and you grab your brakes the motor will turn off automatically so that you know to to stop you from having an accident my battery is not actually finished yet but I am able to use my variable power supply set of 50 volts to power the bike for testing purposes um, it doesn't have a lot of amps to run the motor, but I can, I have actually, it does have enough amps to at least start to turn the motor. So I do know that the motor does turn and then that can power the electronics so I can do some other setup and testing. Okay, this is the 500C controller. You can see it's got miles per hour. It has your battery voltage, battery level. This is your um, pedal assist setting, one, two, three, four, five. Um, this is the um, error light. It's kind of like a check engine light. When I apply the brakes, you can see that that kicks on. That's because it's you know it detected that I've that one of the sensors is indicating an error and it's disabled the motor. So um, you know when you pull the brakes, it kicks off that 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 it, you know kicks off that error code and disables the motor so that you don't have an accident. This is your headlight. Um, I do have a headlight. You hold the up button on and then the uh, the headlight turns on you can see the headlight uh, up on up on the car there and then you hold it down again to turn off um, the uh, um, this is where you set your pedal assist number okay this button under here is to go into the menu so you hold that down and you go into the menu and then you can set you know kilometers or uh, uh, you know you can set metric or, or imperial that's your brightness level this is if you want to turn off the screen um, but the screen doesn't turn off when you're riding this is five minutes of not riding no activity that's where you set your battery level where you set the voltage you can go to more settings here aha there is a secret menu and the code is 1919 to get into the secret menu. So one nine one nine. Okay. In the secret menu, this is where you set your wheel size. This is 27.5. This is where you can set your speed limit. By default, this thing is limited to like 25, 25 kilometers an hour. Um, obviously, with some of these, you know, thousand plus horse, uh, thousand plus watt hub drives, you this thing can do, you know, this thing can probably do sixty kilometers an hour. So, this is where you set your your speed limit. For now, I've just set it to um, fifty kilometers an hour. Um, I I don't know what speed this bike will do. I haven't ridden it yet, but I'm sure for now that's good enough. Um, these settings have to do with um, it has to do with the motor kind of motor that you have and then uh, so I'm, I don't mess with those and then this assist is you can have like you can set how many levels of assist you want you can have one to three one to five or one to nine by default it's on five so I think that's probably fine Let's see if there's any other um, you can set like a pin code to like lock the lock the um, to lock them the the motor um, so that like kind of like um, uh, like an immobilizer, you can set a pin code to start, you know, when you start the bike, if you want to turn on the control, the, the motor, you have to enter a pin. So um, I don't have any of that set up yet, but um, anyways, that's a quick tour of the, uh, of the controller here. And I'm pretty happy with the with the you know the size of this on the picture I thought it was larger but actually it's a good size fits on the handlebars nicely um, yeah so that is a uh, quick overview of the of the conversion um, uh, you know it's one of the one of the hardest things is is all the wiring you can see it's a little, not the neatest thing but there's a big old bundle of wires there. Um, that's because the wires are all way too long um, for for this setup. I mean, you know, I guess good for the manufacturer that they give you extra wire. It would suck if you can't if the wires were too short. But um, there's a ton of extra wire, 
And so cable management is one of the single hardest parts of setting up the bike. Um, so there's all this extra wire. So, you know, I ended up having to sort of fold it on itself and sort of bundle it on the underside here. Um, I may redo this, this bundle. I might try and tuck some of the wiring back there. But for now, this is how I've kind of cable managed it. Um, the problem is there's also a lot of waterproof connectors. Um, everything has a connector and connects onto a main harness that goes down to the motor. So this isn't just wire in this bundle. There's big old connectors and beefy connectors sort of in this thing. So you couldn't, even if, they, even if, you know, even if there was an extra wire, you would still kind of have sort of some, some large connectors and lumpiness in the harness. So um, for now, I kind of just... You know, I kind of folded the wires on itself and on the connectors and zip tied it and then wrapped it in electrical tape and sort of put it on the frame. It doesn't look, let me move back here, it doesn't look bad from a distance. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I may try and redo it at some point, but um, for now I'm pretty happy. You can see the headlight. Um, the motor has a 6 volt headlight out. Um, so they make 6 volt headlights for this, this mid drive. So that's the light and it gets 6 volts from there. And you saw gets controlled by the um, the controller. Anyways, that's the the bike overview, and um, I guess once I finish the battery, which will be my next video, um, since I now have all my spot welder and everything like that, I'll finish the battery, mount it, and give you a, give you a test drive.